Hello, and welcome to episode two of Bragi. Um, let's get started. So, uh, no commits since last time. I haven't done anything. Um, so, uh, I think we'll just continue from where we kicked off last time, um, which was. Uh, we just had a brief overlook or overview of the code um, in its current state. Uh, we added some things to the to-do list. Um, and I think I'll just add one right away, one more, which is to add more audio visualizations. And then one idea here is to, I was thinking about it, um, is to have kind of, some kind of, I don't know how to best describe it, some kind of like a flow. Can we find some flowing pictures? Uh, something like this, kind of. So not water, but some kind of thing flowing down and then the music you know impacts impacts it somehow so uh, I'll just put some kind of flow um, for the to do uh, I've also uh, uploaded the first episode um, so I've made a playlist um, so one up episode is up, I'll continue adding them to this playlist um, just for consistency and makes it easier to find and search. Um, so yeah, um, I also added that to, to the readme. Um, nothing big there. Um, so my idea for today was um, to have a look at this because uh, it's something that I think I'd like to get done pretty quickly or pretty soon before you know of you know before adding more stuff and uh, basically uh, you know making render more complex so uh, moving it to dynamic rendering and 1.3 is something I want to do um, I don't think it's gonna take too long so maybe we can get it done in this session session well in this session um i guess maybe a place to start is to sh maybe show a bit of how the rendering works or not just how the rendering works but how vulkan works um in in the main not the main rendering loop but say in the in the UI scene is probably a good example um, or maybe it's a bit more complex than um, it needs to be. Let's go with the columns scene, probably simpler. So if you look at the render function there is some render pass begin info which where we basically specify this is the render pass that we're going to start um, this is the frame buffer that we're going to use. Um, this is the area of the frame buffer that we're going to render to. Um, we know that the frame buffer has two attachments, so there are two clear values that we're going to clear the attachments to. Then we begin, bind the pipeline, yada yada yada, nothing special there, and then end render pass. Um, and it's, it's basically so these two here. So there's a render pass, uh, and there is a set of frame buffers, uh, one per frames in flight, isn't it? Uh, no, swap chain image count. One per swap chain image. Um, I guess that's never been changed from what it was before because 
we have a max number of frames in flight, which will limit this anyway, but okay, so it's not a limiting factor, but theoretically it could be less, but anyway. So you basically have a frame buffer, a set of frame buffers, and you have a render pass. If you look at the render pass, it has a bunch of info, info so you know it has an output attachment, it has a depth sensor attachment, a lot of info for both of those, um, and then you create the render pass, which is fine. Um, and then the frame buffers, as I just showed, they're down here, so you have a set of frame buffers. Um, they all render to the same intermediate swap chain image view um, and the depth sensor image view. So there's no point in having three of them, or however many. Uh, but anyway, um, and the frame buffer uses this render pass. So um, you have these two objects basically a render pass and a frame buffer. Um, I haven't, you know, I haven't worked on a big render, so I don't know all of the drawbacks with this approach. Um, just the main thing I'm concerned about, it, concerned about is having to create these objects, and if something changes, you know, if, or say you have, uh, if you're changing the resolution, right, you have to recreate the frame buffers. Um, so I just want to avoid that, and that's where dynamic rendering comes in. So it, there is a there's an extension in Vulkan called dynamic rendering. Um, so it re only requires 1.0. which basically removes the concept of render passes and frame buffers from the API and instead just, has, just have begin rendering and end rendering instead so it's simpler in that sense uh, the point here though is that it's been well actually uh, probably it's not deprecated but you know it's been promoted to at least Vulkan 1.3 1.3. So, if I say that you require at least 1.3 to run this app, then I can just go ahead and use the core functionality. I don't have to use the dynamic rendering extension, which is um, just convenient, I think. You know, as I said in the first episode, I'm just creating this for me, so in theory I can just do whatever I want, but you know, probably most people will have a GPU with Vulkan 1.3 on, you know, desktop in the near future, so either that or you have a very old GPU, so, uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to be concerned about not having render passes and frame buffers and or not supporting that, you know, that route, I think I'll just delete all of it and just move to using dynamic rendering. So I think we can just go ahead and, and start working on that um, right away. Uh, one thing though, since we were looking at this, I want to wonder if it's the same for the UI. Does it have three frame buffers as well? I'm guessing it does. Yes. Um, the thing is though, so they all use, so as, as I mentioned in the first episode, there is, you have the swap chain, which has a number of images, um, but there's only one intermediate image. Um, that you're rendering to. So, I don't think there is a point in having three frame buffers because they all render to the same image anyway. Um, so that's one thing we can remove first. I'm just trying to think though if um, 
because if you only have one image, right? So because in 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 the main loop down where we get to the actual rendering, um, so we see here. So there's a few requirements when doing the rendering, and that is so first the intermediate swap chain image is ready to be written to from the color output stage, uh, and it's in a specific layout and so on. Um, and also the same goes for the depth stencil image. Um, so what this means is that two frames can't be writing to the same intermediate swap chain image at the same time. Right? Um, so you get some synchronization there. What I'm wondering though is if this is a bit too strict. Not too strict, but maybe we should have multiple. You should have one intermediate image per frame in flight that you can have. So that two frames, two consecutive frames can both write fragment stuff at the same time. Um, I'm not sure if that's useful from a GPU point of view because if like y you want to render the f the, f the first fr you know if you submit some fragment work from the first frame or frame one and then you submit some fragment work from frame two you want the GPU to be spending all of its time on f finishing frame one first anyway so I don't think there's any use of this because you're still getting, you know, any kind of overlap between different um, work type that the GPU can. So you have, for example, say, um, you know, vertex work for frame two can run while fragment work for frame one is still running. So you still get that kind of overlap. Um, so I think that's fine to just have one intermediate image. Anyway, okay, that was a bit of a rant. Um, let me get back on track here. So um, before we do anything, I just want to commit what I have for now. Let's just check uh, the current state. There's a few things we've changed, so get the phone. I just want to see here, read me. And then. Wasn't there? Oh, it's not been added yet. Okay. Uh, right, so, and then what's this? In source main. Uh, that's just okay, <laughs> and then source looking engine. That was also just that. So we'll add everything in one commit here. So it's basically docs. Let me just check what I call this docs, right? Yes. So it get commit um, docs um, added a few to do's and link to YouTube playlist so at least we're in a clean spot right now so the first thing then is I'll just go ahead and remove having many uh, frame buffers because I wonder if in the render function I only ever frame image index so I do specify which frame buffer to use using the correct resources for the current frame frame buffer for corresponding frame image icon resources for corresponding resource frame resource index sorry so the resources are fine because those can't be you know used across different frames 
um, the frame buffer, however, just as I explained, I think we're fine with just having one. I don't see an issue with that. Because they're all, because, you know, there's, there are, even just in its current form, you know, let's disregard how many intermediate swap chain images we should have. Just in its current form, all frame buffers are pointing to the same image. So there is no point, or to the same image, view, image views, so there is no point in having multiple frame buffers because they're just the same. Um, you know, so uh, I'll go ahead and do that first. So first here in scene columns, it's not a pointer, and then it's just a frame buffer. Uh, current swap chain image count. I set this to something. Yeah, but I don't use that anywhere else now. Okay, cool. So we can remove this, and uh, the resolution is fine. And then frame buffer, we go down here. Can delete this. This goes away. Um, we don't need to do that. And then this is just going to be one iteration, so we can remove that as well. Oops. Um, the resolution is fine. Um, it's just going to be frame buffer. Um, so it's a pointer to a frame buffer. This is all fine. Um, the frame buffer. Um, can just remove this. So this is adding to the name of the frame buffer. So scene columns main frame buffer um, that's just the name. There is no index anymore. So we can just remove that. Um, so that's all good. Um, for So recreating the frame buffers. First we have to delete the old one. Delete the old frame buffer. So there's no point in doing this. There's no array to free anymore. And it's just a single frame buffer. Uh, then we do this again. It's the same process over. So again, only one iteration. Create new frame buffer. Still the same images. or. It's a new image, but it's this, you know, there's just one of each. Uh, there's a single frame buffer here, so no indexing. Again, there's only one, so the name doesn't also also doesn't have an index. This is also just no indexes or indices. Uh, and then this goes away, and I think that's fine. In the rendering function, again, there is no index, so we can just remove that. And then for destroying, there is no array to free anymore. And there is no looping to be done because there's just one. What did I do? What? What was that setting? I don't know. Like so. So. Building this should be fine. There are warnings and stuff that I haven't fixed, um, simply because I haven't <laughs> done so. So we can run this, and it should... You know what I want to do? Because last video got a copyright... Not strike, I don't know what it's called. Some copyright stuff with one of the songs that I played. So... Um, what I want to do is change the order of the songs. I think it's just here that I have the playlist, so it's this one. So let me just change the order here. So probably it won't get flight anymore. So we could try that. It's, I think it also was a bit loud last time, so I'll turn it a bit more down. Uh, but yeah, so now we should have the correct. What happened? Yeah, a better order. So. We can play this. Uh, we'll play the flag playlist.
Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard and milder than cream, what better... Fine, which is good. Uh, so I'll do the same thing for the UI scene, and then we'll be done with that. Or with this part. Um, so again, we don't need this frame buffer. It's not a pointer anymore. Um, we can go down here, so this is just a bit of busy work, not very interesting. Um, like that. Um, again, no index in the name. No indexing for naming. No indexing for creating. Um, no array to delete old frame buffer. Create new frame buffer. We don't need to malloc anything. No need to loop. I guess I should check that the recreation stuff works also, but uh, there's, <laughs> you know, it'll work. Um, so just a bit of a few things remaining. Um, remove this. I think oh, it's probably in the deletion as well, isn't it? What is here? Sorry, did I delete something? Nope. Like that. And then for rendering, of course. Yep. Sorry. So there's just one. Um, like that, and then I haven't actually added destruction of the scene, so that's something I should do. So there's probably a bit of similar stuff here, uh, although not just the same. So I can open up a new here to get. So what do we need to we need to delete, delete this one? I'll start from the bottom. That's always what I do. So this one, uh, we destroy this one. Destroy this one. There are two layouts as well. So let's destroy those. There are some shader modules. Probably didn't destroy those in the previous one. In this. Is um, so let's do that. So after this pipeline layout, we do UK destroy shader module lock in uh, device and let's just do them from the top here or from the bottom is always what I do. And I don't have any memory management set up, so yep, those are all just null. Um, like so, there's a render pass, which is destroyed, that's fine. Uh, there's a descriptor set, destroy descriptor set, uh, but it's probably, or it's, because you allocate a descriptor set, don't you? So it's destroyed, or it's freed when you destroy the pool, so I think that's fine. So this is this, uh, the descriptor set layout we destroy. Like that. Um, so for buffers, look in the destroy buffer. I have okay. I have some helper function here. Um, so we've destroyed this. Is the last thing we need to destroy the sampler. So you can destroy sampler. Looking device font image sampler. Null. Image view. Image map. Do I have help functions for this? V. Look and destroy. I don't. Okay. VK destroy 
image view uh, Vulcan device um, font image view UK free memory Sorry, this is probably not the most interesting stuff, but let's, so let's image, just to get it done, memory, oops, sorry, typing and talking is not the easiest thing, font, image, memory, no, ek, destroy, image, font, image, Uh, let's see, so we've destroyed this one, that one, that one, that one. What else is there? So there is... We need to destroy this buffer. So we can just pass this. There's an area of buffers. So, okay, let's have a look here. So. We can at least destroy this. I don't know why it passed them as pointers, but okay. Um, then there's this and this. And okay, so we can do. Those are free the same way. But then there are two arrays of... So there are these two, and then there are these two. So I had, need to check what these actually are. So... So each one of them are buffers. Right, they're resource buffers, okay. So they are, right, so it's the text that goes into the info section. And there's, because it's a resource, there's one per image in flight, or per frame in flight that we can have. So there aren't many, but it's basically just that many. So we'll have to have two for loops, um, so. T i equals zero. Well, that's less than this. I plus plus. Um, and then we just destroy the buffer like this. And then we can copy this down here. We do need to fix the which buffers and so on, but that's the idea. I'm guessing the same is true for this here, because it's also a resource. Yes. So, that explains that. So, for this one, it's the first one is the memory is this on i. And then it's, it's this on i. And here it's the same thing. So, it's this. On I, what happened? What did I do? Uh, copy this on I and the buffer on I. So, just if we have a look here, so this one is destroyed there, this one is destroyed here, this one is destroyed there. This one's destroyed here. This one's destroyed. This one's destroyed. Oops, sorry, did I go the wrong way? This one. This one. This one. This one. The font image, the font image memory, the font image view, the font image sampler is destroyed. The descriptor pool is 
destroyed. Let's move this to where it belongs. Was it above the, this? Yeah. So the scripture pool is destroyed. The scripture layout is destroyed. The render process is destroyed. Four shaders are destroyed. Two pipeline layouts, two pipelines, and one frame buffer. So I think we got everything. Uh, so a bit of cleanup here. For this, I think we'll have to do a double check to make sure we got everything. So there is a frame buffer, a pipeline, pipeline layout, a descriptor set layout. So we forgot the two shaders again. So VK uh, destroy sh shader module. Uh, Looking device, and it's this. And this. Uh, descriptor sets are allocated from this, that's so fine. The descriptor set layout is destroyed. The descriptor pool is destroyed. The render pass is destroyed. And we destroy the buffer and its memory. So I think everything is good. I just want to check where this is, because this is called. Um, is it called anywhere? No. It's not. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's probably, if I was thinking about when I have more scenes later on, I probably don't want to initialize all of them, so you want to destroy, if you're changing scene, you want to destroy the currently one, the ones that are currently being used, and then, you know, initialize a new one, but um, that's not the case yet here. Um, so I think it's only these, the recreate ones, that are actually used because, so they only destroyed the frame buffer and then some yada yada yada. Um, so, um, this is this. So I think I'll just commit this first. Um, I want I want to try and make this clean. Um, so if I just add both of these. So what did I do? Can I type please? Uh, so it's Vulcan. Um, and so move or move scenes to only have one frame buffer. Move scenes to only have one frame buffer. Since the frame buffer for each previously, or let's explain this a bit more. So previously, um, each scene had multiple frame buffers, one per swap chain image. Um, however, All frame buffers were had the same image view attachment. This um, is uh, useless. <laughs> So now all scenes only have one frame buffer. Also fixed or also um, corrected or implemented or also um, touched up the destroy destroy functions for both scenes. That's good. Um, so, yeah, let's just push that. Um, so, okay, <laughs> anyway, a uh, small uh, derail there. 
close everything here. So, anyway, let me just grab some water. So maybe we can try to now actually start doing what we were supposed to do, which is move everything to Vul Vulkan 1.3, and more importantly, also dynamic rendering. So um, first thing to do is actually to enable 1.3, which should be pretty straightforward. So uh, let's see. Instance API versus I remember this stuff confuses me, um, but API target API version is here. So we get the instance version supported. If the instance version is less than the target API, oh sorry, target API. Okay, so we can just do 1.3 here. like that. Should run fine. Hopefully. No issues. So let's have a look. Does it say anything? So Vulkan Instance API version is 1.3201 and the physical device supports 1.3194. So we have 1.3 support which is good. Everything should work. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard and milder than cream, what best wets your whistle? So, that was the easy part. <laughs> the more difficult part is now uh, actually making use of dynamic rendering uh, instead of frame buffers and render passes. So we're prob we'll probably need to have this um, readily available. Um, so one thing with this though is that you don't have subpasses anymore. Now I, I guess I, I should have mentioned that before. So you don't have subpasses so um, you also don't have subpass inputs anymore. Um, we're on desktop. This is, you know, a desktop application, so it's not too important. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things. So all synchronization is now done between not render passes, but rendering. You know, so um, yep, should be easier. No subpasses anymore. So, um, let's look at, so the first thing we'll have to do is, of course, you have to start rendering. Uh, and to do that, you specify a command buffer, of course. So as you can see here, you have the by with, you know, it's provided by the extension, but then if you have 1.3, it's core functionality, so that's cool. Um, so to begin rendering, you specify the command buffer and then some rendering info. Um, the rendering info is some flags. I don't know if there's anything here yet. Um, there is, but probably not too important for us right now. Uh, the render area, layer count, a view mask indicates indicating the indices of attachment layers that will be rendered when it is not zero probably will be zero for us for the most part uh, color attachment count number of color attachments number of depth attachments or oh, it's not a number it's just one of course and then one for stencil as well so the most important thing here then is this so rendering attachment info. 
So you have to specify the image view, image layout, resolve stuff, load and store, and clear value. So, I mean, there's not that much to it. End rendering is probably nothing, right? Yeah, it's just a command buffer. So, yep, that's pretty. You have some stuff here for, you know, you can extend this to do use VRS. Uh, nothing, these are all just extensions, so it's very simple in many ways. Pipeline rendering create info. What is this? So you, you have to specify this when creating a pipeline, which is something we'll have to do. Um, so we'll get keep that in mind. So when you're creating the pipeline, you have to specify the VMask again, which is fine. Number of color attachments to formats, and then the depth and sensor format. So a lot simpler than <laughs> creating render passes with subpasses and dependencies and just frame buffers and you have to have the render pass to create the frame buffer I think and you have to have the render pass to create the pipeline which is kind of the same thing as here but still so yeah this should all be a bit simpler so what we can try to do is Instead of moving everything to use dynamic rendering, we can try to move a scene. Maybe first, and this is the simplest one, so or the smallest one, the columns one. So it's basically bit so this is basically gone. Or this is gone. Um and instead and also this is gone. And what we'll have instead is so first, okay. I'll I'll try to be a bit more. Um, uh, what do you call it? I don't know what you call it. Anyway, so I'm going a bit all over the place. Is my point. So I'll be try to focus a bit more here. Uh, so let's see where we create the render pass. I guess that's the first thing. We want to remove, so we do that at the very top here. So let's have a look at the render pass. So there are two attachments. Um, there is one dependency, and that's an, that's an external dependency, All right? Um, create the render pass and so on. So what we can try to do here is to instead of doing this, we will fill out this. Because you need this before you can create the pipeline. So there are three steps. It's first uh, create render pass, then create pipeline, and then create frame buffer. So at least that's the way I do it. Um, so we still have to specify the rendering info before we create the pipeline and then this step is also just gone. So first we have to specify this. So we can do that here. So uh, rendering is there, what's the name of these? Pipeline rendering info, rendering attachment info, and then rendering info. Okay, so we'll name them accordingly. So pipeline rendering info Um, as usual, this type equals VK structure type pipeline rendering. No? Pipeline rendering. <laughs> what am I doing? Pipeline rendering. No KHR. Uh, P next is nothing. Uh, view mask is probably just zero. 
because we don't have layers or anything. Color attachment count is one. Because there's only one output attachment. A P color attachment formats is just so let's do that then. So VK format. Uh let's call it color attachment format equals It's in the frame. No, it's not. Specify the image view. But I have it available anyway. So the color format er is going to be. Oh, we actually don't need this. We can just pass it directly. So it's going to be Vulkan. Um, intermediate swap chain image format. Adders of that, because there's just one. Uh, P depth sensor format equals Vulcan depth sensor format, and then stencil is the same because they're both right. Yep. So that's it. <laughs> we can delete all of this. So let's just comment it out for now. We won't go that all as drastic as deleting everything, but we'll comment it out. I'll comment it out for now. We can also comment out this and instead of. Well, <laughs> do we want to have it to be static? It can't just be temporary because we don't need it after this. So. Yeah, we can just have it like that. Um, cool. Uh, the point then is that um, this is passed to. If we go to VK Graphics Pod and create info, P next. I'm cheating a bit because I've done this at work, but so I know kind of the gist of it. Um, but let's just search for this. Um, if render pass is VK null handle, the pipeline is being created with pre rasterization state, shader state, TV mask, member of. Uh, what is this? <laughs> if render pass is. You can pilot. Pipeline is being created with pre rasterization shader state, TV mask, member of structure, including VMAX. It's not null and multi. What the hell? That's not what I was interested in. If the pipeline is being created with fragment output interface state and render presses, doesn't it say like which members PNX can be? That's kind of what I was looking for. What does it say here? I guess. When a pipeline is created without a VK render pass, when a pipeline is created without a VK render pass, if this structure is present in the pnext chain of VK, pi VK graphics pipeline create info, it specifies the view masking format of attachment used for rendering. If this structure is not specified and the pipeline does not include a render pass, view masking color attachment count are zero, and depth also format and also format are VK format undefined. For graphics pipeline is created with a valid random pass parameters of the structure are ignored. What does this mean? That doesn't make sense. If this structure is not specified and the pipeline does not have, does not include a random pass. Oh, okay, cool. Anyway, so we included in the PNX, that's my point. <laughs> um, so this is going into the PNX of the graphics pipeline. So Shader stages, yada yada yada, 
and then down here this goes in here and this becomes so um, let's have that for now and sorry I just want to comment stuff out instead of um, so pipeline rendering info and then this is also commented out and we replace it with a VK null handle like that um, again the frame buffer is not going to be created uh, instead we have to do something else but we can comment it out so we know that we have to do it Uh, the frame buffer is basically you can set this up uh, beforehand, or you can do it, you know, on demand. Uh, you know, I think we could just do it on demand. There's no point of doing it. Well, I mean, if you can do it once, why do it multiple times? But still, um, because uh, I guess it's, it's easier to do it on demand. Because if you do have to recreate this, you'd have, it's not easier, but having to recreate this, um, it's the kind of the same thing. So if you have to recreate the frame buffer that we don't longer have, you have to update the rendering info. If so, so with a new image view for the attachment because the intermediate swap chain image has been recreated. Um, so it's a bit like, eh, do it every frame or do it just once. I'm a bit. We can just do it every frame and then instead we can just have it to do possibly move it out but you know it's so minimal compared to anything else but although at the same time why not just do it like that so we also have to comment out this stuff so, so yeah you know you know what let's just move everything to static and have it outside so static like that and we can just remove that yeah, we, we we have we, <laughs> we know what we're working with so we can do things up front and avoid doing it every frame so why not do that um we let me just have a look here. So we need rendering info. Rendering info. And then this has a number of these, right? So there is a color attachment, a depth sensor, and color attachment. I'm just a bit torn about what to do, but it doesn't really matter, but still. Um, let's just do it every frame. Who cares? We can fix it afterwards if it's ever an issue. Because then we don't have to recreate anything. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, just making up my mind here. Oh, sorry, that's my phone. Huh. Uh, anyway, so in the main render pass, so we are going to. <laughs> sorry, so uh, just let's do this up front here. Um, rendering info, rendering info. Let's just fill this up. So, let's 
type equals vk structure type rendering info p next is nothing I think for us at least for now flags is null or zero um, layer count is one because there's always one layer or we're in rendering area we have to do that first so Okay, so um, rendering info render area dot extent dot width is equal to what do we call it? Resolution zero. Uh, and then Offset dot x equals zero and y as well. Rendering to the entire thing. That's cool. Uh, layer count is one. Dot view mask is zero. Um, color attachment count is 1. P color attachment is something. P depth attachment is something. And P stencil attachment is something. So this is when these come in to the picture. So color attachment color attachment EK structure type rendering attachment info P next is null image view image view is what? it's Vulcan Intermediate swap chain image view. Um, the layout is going to be, well, image layout is going to be VK image layout color attachment optimal. Uh, resolve mode. What are the options here? Uh, none. Resolve image views. Um, image view. VK null handle, and the same goes. Or if the layout is undefined, I guess. Uh, image resolve image layout is this. Let me just move that up here. Um, the load up is. Let's do that next. Let me just check what we said. Probably is clear, but anyway. Um, clear, store. Um, EK, clear. No, what is it called? VK attachment load up clear store up equals VK attachment store up store like that and then clear value is clear value dot color dot float Uh, sorry, not thinking. So we'll clear it to.
black and no alpha. That's probably what we did here. Uh, it's actually, it's down here, isn't it? Uh, we actually had alpha one, but it doesn't matter. Oh, actually, it does. I don't know. I'm not into uh, all of that stuff. So that was one. <laughs> we have to do the rest. So let's copy this and we'll do depth attachment and stencil attachment. So stencil depth. change all of these. So this is going to be the depth sensor image view for both. Layout um, depth stencil attachment optimal. Same for both. Resolve no, no, or no, none, null, undefined, clear, store. That's probably the same as what we had here. Clear, don't care. Don't care, don't care. Okay. So let's do that then. Up, don't care. And, oops, don't care. And this is depth, stencil dot depth equals 1.0. Oh. And here, instead of depth we'll have stencil which is let's just clear it to zero let me check that I did the same thing here uh, sorry it's down here of course so depth is one stencil is zero yeah cool so this is going to be the color attachment this is the depth and this is the stencil like so. So if you try to recap a bit here what we've, what we've done. So we've filled, filled out each attachment or the info for each attachment. We've then filled in the rendering info which means we can call this. So uh, instead of calling begin render pass and instead of calling end at the very end, we should just be able to do a frame command buffer and this. I think it's the pointer. Yeah. And then at the end here, we can call a frame command. Oh, frame command buffer. Uh, but instead of begin, it's end rendering. So a few things we have to clean up here so we don't destroy this anymore. Um, there are errors in the recreation because the frame buffer is no longer there. But we can just comment out all of that. Uh, even this. So the only thing we'll have to update is the resolution that we now have. So that's a lot simpler. Isn't it? <laughs> so first the question is does this build? It should. Second question is does it run? So no, it does not. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Vulcan validation error message. UK Great Graphics Pipeline P Create Info's render pass is VK null handle, but dynamic rendering is not enabled. The Vulcan spec states if dynamic rendering feature is not enabled, render pass must be not be. Okay, so we have to enable dynamic rendering. So that's going to be a device feature. 
So let's go down to the device, which is here. So enable features is null. Okay. Uh, it is going to so VK physical device features. So there, it's not going to be so. This is 1.0, so there is no dynamic rendering in this, right? Um, if we go to this, uh, you see with this, it's, specific, it's provided by 1.1. 1, 1 .1. uh, you have the base structure with the features, uh, and then you can pass in PNX members here. So uh, these can basically be, uh, you know, any feature structure. So uh, there is probably is there is it like just promoted to yada 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 new commands. That's fine. New structures, uh, VK physical, physical device tool properties, extending physical device features, device, okay, here, there we go. So that's the one we want. Why isn't it just here? Can I click it? Okay. So, what we have to do here first, okay, so first of all, um, in this, there is nothing. So, additional features that are enabled have to be specified or passed to the pnext of the device. Create info. Because this is just a pointer to such a structure, so we have to pass it to the P next. Um, so the first thing we'll do is um, pick physical device, physical device extension. Uh, we'll just have to add this here. Physical device features. So what we'll do is we call um, VK get physical device features two on the physical device device uh, physic oops f physical device features like that. Uh, this is then going to be one of these. So, like so, um, S type equals VK structure type physical, man, physical device features too. Uh, this will be filled out by this call. Uh, so what we need to pass is this. So uh, dyne physic <laughs> physical device feature dynamic uh, rendering long name, but it's, it's descriptive at least. At least uh, equals VK structure type if <laughs> physical device uh, dynamic rendering features p next is nothing because that's the only one we want to pass and then again this will be filled out by this call so we don't have to set it to anything because that's the idea of this or that's the point of this however we do need to set this p next to point to this so that it fills out both um, like so. So we should now have that and what we can do here is basically if 
um, we can now check the feature here in this. So if dynamic rendering is equal to VK false, then we do a printf. Do I have any like macros? I don't have like an error print func error print function, do I? I don't think so. What's all the way at the top here with the versions and stuff? So I was like if Yeah, I just do this. Um Vulcan instance blah, 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 blah. yeah, so just print whatever. So print uh Vulcan implementation or physical device something uh, does not support this dot this exit exit failure and it's the physic physical device props device name um, and then so it should be true so we can then just pass this here so let's check that that works so if you go into Vulcan engine gosh it loads so slowly um, go down a bit here so where is the device? It's right here. So we can go here, hit the breakpoint, and then just so we make the call. So now it should be populated with whatever uh, the implementation supports or the physical device support supports. So physical device here, dynamic rendering is one. So that's good. So we should now just be able to run this completely. Uh, still some <laughs> errors in the validation layers. Let's see what they say. Um, so VKQ submit come out expects image. Yeah, so that's the thing now. Uh, with this, so since you don't have a render process anymore, you have to do the layout transitions yourself. So, um, it's cool that you can combine dynamic rendering and non dynamic rendering, though, so you don't have to like convert everything at once. Um, but so basically, at the beginning of rendering. Um, the input image is going to be in some non. So we know that it's going to be in what format? VK image layout transferred source optimal. Right, because at the end of every frame, you blit from the intermediate image to the actual swap chain. So the intermediate is in transfer source uh, all the time. And actually transfer it to that layout before, right? Like before the app starts, like really starts. So, what we basically need is a pipeline barrier that changes or transfers the layout. Now, I wonder in Vulkan Engine. Transition image layout. So I have this function. So let's we can use that. Specify a bit of stuff, but that's fine. So here, uh, Vulcan context. So that's just Vulcan. A frame command buffer, the VK image. So that is the 
it's Vulcan intermediate swap chain image. The old layout is VK image layout uh, transfer source optimal. The new image layout is going to be VK image layout. Now we also have to fix like a memory barrier. So we'll see. But let's just test if this works. Uh, color. No, actually, okay, we have this here. Okay, sorry. Never mind. So VK image aspect color. Uh, the barrier. So So it's a VK pipeline stage. Uh, let's think. So before So all rights to color buffer color output stage must have finished. So pipeline stage color attachment output bit uh, VK access flag um, what is it called? Color attachment right and what has to wait for this? Well it's the same only with the read as well. So this is 256 and this is 128. So let, let's put it before for consistency. Uh, we can put Well, in theory we could put per region, but um, yeah, let's VK dependent C by region because that's the that's the case. So we've now transferred it to this, and then after rendering has finished, uh, it's kind of the same. So there is no layout transition going to happen here because it's still going to be in. So if you look here in the rendering, so um, rendering the scene is, um, you know, that's the first thing that happens. So you have to transfer it from transfer source to color attachment. And then we have a barrier here, just a memory barrier. Um, because there's no actual transition of the image needed because it's still in color attachment optimal. So uh, this should be enough and we don't need this. So that's cool. Uh, let's try that. And there's no valid, there are no validation errors. We can get the UI up and running, which is cool. And we can try to play the flag playlist. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter Which than place, mustard and milder than cream? What best wets your whistle, better. what's clearer than crystal, sweeter than honey and, and stronger than errors. steam? That's always fun, isn't it? So why, <laughs> why is that happening? So... I guess it's a good time to maybe try and fire up RenderDoc to see what's going on. Because it's, it's so useful. Um, yeah, let's just capture... Okay, we need a few frames here to actually type in the command. Um, so let's do that and then we can... Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard? So we got frame number 1000. So this is, you see here, C in columns, 
and the UI render pass. So that's the labels that I've given them. So it's so useful. Here you can see the names of the images and everything. So it's so good. Um, so if you look here, um, clear, and then we draw, but nothing is drawn. <laughs> Uh, and rendering, okay. Um, why? So can we first have a look at the draw call? So the draw call is fine. Uh, it's full screen, or it's a it's a full screen quad. Uh, let's see here. There's the DFT buffer. The resolution is input. Everything's you know fine there. It's just that it's black for some reason. So a thing to perhaps try here would be to change the shader. So this is going to be scene columns frag. And we can just set this to be something else. Uh, let's just set it to be some ugly color. Yellow. Um, and then I'd have to compile the shaders again, so just hang on a bit here. Uh, compile. I wonder if did I change this? Okay, there are no paths in here. Okay. So compile that and then we can do this again. Don't save this capture. Oh, I'm late. Sorry. Maybe give me a f few more frames. Ugh, I did it wrong again. Are you serious? Come on. Play. Playlist. Flag. Dot text. Come guess me this riddle. What beats pipe and fiddle? What's hotter than mustard and milder than cream? What best? So there's still nothing. Or, we don't need render act to know that, right? <laughs> uh, so, clear. They all fail the depth test. They all pass stencil test because there's nothing. They all fail depth testing. So it's not the shader, or obviously, obviously, it's not the shader. But uh, we can just uh, recompile those, uh, so we're back to normal. Um, so why? Is it failing depth testing? Um, so if we look in uh, in here, so begin rendering. System, so let's look at depth. Uh, it's one. So I mean, do I even have have depth test? Tep oh, I can't talk. Depth testing enabled in this. Uh, depth test enable is true. Less or equal. And I mean, the geometry for this is well. If you look in the shader, it's zero. Sorry, in the vertex shader. No, it's one. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's disable depth testing then. Uh, where was it? Here it is. So, 
less or equal? I mean, it's less or equal, right? So why isn't... What is the, the content of the depth buffer here? None. Um, how does this work? Can I, like... No. I just want to... Well, it's all black, but so why is it black? That is the question, right? Or it's black because it's zero, but why is it zero? The load up is clear. I mean, what? So if we look back in this, Hold up. I mean, what did I do? Sorry. What did I do now? Jesus, did I close it? <laughs> Let's see, what is this depth attachment? Ah, shit. See? Fuck. Sorry. No swearing. Copy-paste, huh? It's always the copy-paste. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle? Well, it's still black. <laughs> uh, render doc round two. Let's see. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard and milder than cream? What best wets your whistle, what's clearer than crystal sweet? Sweeter than honey and stronger than steel. Let's see. So again, it's all black for some reason. Why is it black? Like, do I have to specify? I shouldn't. Sp Does this matter? I don't know if it does. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard and milder than cream, what best- oh, I'm a bit confused now. Depth, clear, zero. So why is it, okay, so let's just test this. If I turn off depth testing, sh will it pass? Hopefully. <laughs> uh, false. Let's just make another run here. Ah, shit. No. Oh, it's a bit annoying, that thing. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard and milder than cream? What best wets your whistle, what's clearer than crystal? So even if I turn off depth testing, it's still black. Which kind of makes me... Bit what is going on? Because if... Uh, 
I'm confused now. Even without depth testing, it's not showing anything. Why? Because it didn't change anything about this stuff, you know? This is all the same as if it was a frame buffer. Let me just check if I bring this back to life. Uh, the frame buffer here. This can still be the same, it's fine. We don't care about that. Well, actually, did I build? Is <laughs> hang on. Uh, I might f might have screwed myself over there. Hang on. If I go all the way, if I go back to having this. If I build this. Because render doc doesn't build my stuff. Come guess me this riddle. What beats there pipe and go. fiddle? What's hotter than so mustard and milder than cream? What best wets your works. whistle? What's clearer than cream? Alright, so if you look at this now, uh, here, it's white. So it's not the depth testing either, right? It's I am guessing that it was because now actually that's this is the current stage. Let me just check. So depth testing is on, so it's fine. So it's probably the fact that I had didn't specify those. If we go back to this, it won't work. I am guessing. Let's just do another capture just to double check that everything makes sense. Come guess me this yes. riddle what So probably the reason if for this is just we can verify double verify if we go to the bottom here where we're actually doing the rendering uh we can just stop here um and we can inspect the stencil attachment uh clear value depth stencil depth is some garbage stuff so it's cleared to that and then everything is screwed so you have to specify both steps and stencil so you can close around and back so I think though basically that this means we can delete all of this stuff we don't need to end the render pass we don't need to do this anymore We don't need to delete the frame buffer. We don't need to create the frame buffer. We don't need this. And we don't need this. And as for the render pass itself, I was thinking about the dependency. So it's basically what we have here, right? So, bef um, no, so hang on. If we think a bit what's going on here. so. Because I have a barrier before, I have a memory barrier before the rendering of the scene, right? Um, and this ensures that this has finished. So, so we, if you see here, intermediate swap chain image, the last step of a frame is splitting the intermediate swap chain image to the swap chain image, a transfer operation. Frame M must have finished this operation and written data made available before frame N plus one can start reading and writing during color output. So transfer has to finish writing. 
before color up attachment can start reading or writing to the attachment or to the image. So um, I'm wondering if this um, barrier that we have to transition the image layout is not unnecessary, but the parameters are too strict. So it needs to happen when? It needs to happen before the color output stage starts reading or writing the image. What does it depend on? Well, nothing. So um, it doesn't depend on anything there. And as for these, or for the pipeline stage, I wonder if, because if we see, um, in the second thing, specifies no stage of execution when specified in the first scope. So you don't have to wait for anything to do this, but you have, you don't have to wait on anything to finish before you can do the, the transition but any later commands that do this have to wait for the transition to finish. Okay, I think that's that's a good that's that's good. So we can just run this normally and uh sorry, playlist flag. Come guess me this riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's hotter than mustard? Back again, god damn it. Did I not put that back in? Nope, I did not. That's cool. Uh, stencil is black and depth is not black. I don't know if the depth stencil testing settings make sense, but, uh, well, they make sense, but I don't know if, sure if it's the best way to go. Oh, we could probably just disable it for uh, this specific scene, but, you know, we can fix that later. Come guess me this yeah, riddle, what beats pipe and fiddle, what's Sounds. hotter than mustard and milder than cream? Two, one, two, three, four. Anyway, uh, that's basically about it. So I haven't done it for everything because there's a bit more. So there's another, another scene, the UI scene, but uh, we can either I'll do that on my own or we'll do that next time. It's probably not the most interesting thing, but uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll do it next time. Fiance is out of time, so I have some downtime to do do some work on this um, but let's commit this so if we check what we did well let me see what did I do here so this is just adding this right so we can first uh, add this and commit that um, well, can uh, well, let's do it in a regular commit. Um, Vulcan. Um, move to 1.3. Um, or require. Require a Vulcan 1.3 support and also dynamic rendering support. That's that one. And then we need this. So git commit Vulcan move scene columns 
to use dynamic rendering. rendering. Move scene columns to use dynamic rendering. Like so. And we can push those. And we're done. So uh, I'll stop there. It's quite a long session. Um, I don't know if it's too long for a video format, but um, we did a few few different things um, today, which is let me close all these, which is good. Um, if we have a look at what we did, so just the random to dos. Um, we moved to only have one frame buffer, but then <laughs> we overrode that, or we we moved away from frame buffers in the scene column scene. Anyway, uh, so we upgraded to 1.3 and then ported. I guess I, should, I guess I should have said ported, but um, scene columns is now using dynamic rendering, which is which is cool. So, um, yeah progress. So, yep, we'll end there.